People have always been fascinated by the Oscars. And for a long time, collectors have been going after one-sheet posters for the films that won Best Picture Oscar. I first got the idea for collecting the films that won the Academy Award for Best Picture because I thought it would be an interesting walk through history. If you try to collect all the films that were nominated for the Best Film Oscar, you will cover a great piece of film history and many of the most important films. And it's an unusual category because no one has really done this before. For any Oscar collector, the prize is a one sheet for a title. A very rare title in the arena of the films that have won Best Picture is Broadway Melody, which was the second film to win the Oscar for Best Picture. And in the, within the last year, a one sheet for Broadway Melody did come to market and I was lucky enough to be able to acquire it for my collection and add it to all of the other pieces that I have. And so for me, it's a lot of fun to have so much coverage on a title that's so very difficult from the 20s. At some point in time, people started looking at the films that won the Oscar and looking at the films that were nominated. Well, there were masterpieces that won. There are a lot of real boring films that also won for political reasons or whatever reason. By starting to look at the films nominated that did not win, you get films like The Grapes of Wrath, Citizen Kane, Stagecoach, The Magnificent Ambersons. All classic films from cinema history, but if you focus just on the winners, you lose all of these great movies, some that may have had more impact than the actual winners, but if you stick with the winners, you lose those films that had those impacts. And so by expanding um, to the nominees, uh, it just added so much more and so much more substance to what I was doing. One of the great films that was nominated for Best Picture was The Grapes of Wrath by John Ford. Fox did a series of color stills for this film, and look at them. Look at those luminous colors. Another favorite poster of mine from my collection is the three sheet for It Happened One Night. You know, you have a full length shot of the leading lady in her beautiful dress, which you don't see on the one sheets and in that long format of the three sheet it's absolutely stunning and the colors are beautiful on the dress and then the background is a dark blue and you put that together and it's just absolutely a gorgeous piece to put on your wall. One of my favorite posters in my collection is the Style D one sheet for Philadelphia Story. The artwork is terrific, the colors are very well done, it just kind of pops out at you. And I'm also a Jimmy Stewart fan and he won his Oscar for Best Actor for Philadelphia Story. So lots of different things come together for me in that one title and in, and in one poster. This is an original hand-tailed portrait of Eric von Stroheim in Renoir's The Grand Illusion. This is the first movie that was ever nominated for a Best Film Oscar that was in a foreign language. And this undoubtedly was done for the world premiere at one of the prestigious theaters on the Champs-Élysées. Campaign books and press books are interesting to me, just so you can see, in some cases, what was handed out to somebody as they were coming into the theater, or how was the film advertised. This is the original campaign book for Casablanca. It's large and it's detailed. And look at all the posters that are illustrated. It shows all the different ads that were being used for Casablanca. Here's a movie of the week with a different ad for every day. Here we have a suite of items from All About Eve. This was the film to have received the most Academy Award nominations and won Best Picture of 1950. We have the Souvenir Program and we have the Opening Night Special Program and we have the unused ticket to the evening's event. This is probably the most single iconic shot from Casablanca, and I've never had one before. There's Sam at the piano, there's Bogart Rick, and there's Henry Bergman. With Sam at the piano, there's no more legendary or iconic shot from this film. Here I have the film program for The Great Dictator, Charlie Chaplin was nominated for Best Actor, Best Writer, and the film was nominated for Best Picture. And this was the only time Chaplin was um, nominated for competitive Academy Awards. So what makes a poster desirable? Well, there's rarity, which literally means a measure of how many of these things exist. There's beauty, there's condition. It's important to have it in the best possible condition. And then there is the issue of how important is the film. We have sometimes very rare posters from very important films which are terrible posters. 
and we could get very rare posters for totally obscure movies, which are gorgeous. Which is more important? That's not something for me to decide. They're all important. It depends on what you like and what matters to you. You're the one who puts it on your wall. So if it gives you pleasure, that's what matters. You know, you should buy what you like, not what you think someone else is going to appreciate. Collecting posters and the lobby cards in the various sizes and formats has very much enriched my life because it's become a passion for me. It's gone beyond a hobby where it is something I truly love. And a result of collecting these different things, I actually start watching more movies. And so I start learning more about classic cinema and film history and a famous director like Hitchcock or an actor like Bogart. And so what started as a fairly small hobby has now totally expanded my scope of film and collecting and just the whole business in general and what it's about and just how enjoyable it is. And I hope one day that uh, my kids will love films and movie posters and I'll be able to pass my collection on to them and let them take care of it for another generation.